In this lecture, we are going to build a local blockchain with the Gnash command line interface. We need to run a local client that will act as a small version of the Ethereum virtual machine. We could run our project on the Ethereum virtual machine or connect to the main network. But to start off, we're going to run a local client on our own local blockchain. This is the best way for a developer to build their projects. And then once the project is complete, then you can deploy to the main network. To build our own Ethereum virtual machine, our own local blockchain, we can use a tool from the Truffle suite, and that is known as Ganache. Ganache has a desktop application and a command line interface application. In this project, we're going to use the command line interface application. And we are going to do that because we want to run that programmatically and we can also configure Ganache very specifically if we use the CLI. So let's go ahead and get started by installing the Ganache CLI into our project. I'm going to use npm install ganache.cli and save it to the development mode. Now we are going to add a script to our project to allow us to run Ganache with a shorthand. So we need to open up our package.json file inside of our project. Here we have package.json. Under scripts, we saw that we could add a shorthand, such as npm test, to run some longer command. Let's have a shorthand that will be npm ganache, and we're going to have the ganache CLI run on a certain network. So we are going to have a specific network ID, which we'll have to set in config. So right underneath scripts, we can add configuration. And then for the ganache command, we can set a variable like network ID. And let's put in a network ID here, such as 3777. This can be any ID, as long as it doesn't conflict with the network ID that actually does exist. For example, we might have one, which is the ID of Ethereum mainnet, or we might have 42, which is for a test net. So you just want to make sure that you choose some network ID that doesn't actually exist because we're just going to be using our own. Okay, then don't forget a comma here after config. So we've set network ID and that's what we're going to pass in to the ganache command. So we can have some kind of script command and then we can have a configuration for that exact command, like setting a variable network ID. Other than that, we also want to add in after network ID, the npm package config ganache network ID. Then we want to allow an unlimited contract size. So these are all just different properties for the command that we're running. These are different configurations for the Ganache, the Ganache blockchain that we're running. We also want to set a gas limit. So we can build another variable or property rather that will be called the gas limit. And we can set this to some number like 700,000. All right, then let's go back there and continue on with our long command. Typically, if you want to configure your own local blockchain in a very specific way, it helps to have this shorthand, so that way you don't have to type this out every time you want to run Ganache. Okay, so we have our gas limit. Then we're going to call npm package config Ganache gas limit, so that will configure the Ganache to have that gas limit. Next, we'll also have gas price, and you guessed it, we're using npm package config. And this time we want to, again, set ganache, configure ganache, and set its gas price. So let's set a gas price property for the configuration. And we can set in 
some price here in we like a very, very large number really and just make sure it is a number you want to make sure that you don't have these in strings the network ID also shouldn't be a string these should all be numbers the name of the property should be a string but then the value should just be a number so make sure you don't have those quotes or else you could come across some problems okay so then we have set our gas price one more thing we need is to set a mnemonic so I'm going to set the mnemonic and I'm going to use an environment variable so I have to just escape out of it with a backslash then I'm going to put in a variable this will be a an environment variable called mnemonic and I'll show you how to build that shortly then we want to close the quotation marks so we just use this backslash to escape out of the double quotation marks and then we can put in a dollar sign as well to just wrap this mnemonic because we're going to put in an environment variable for the mnemonic whereas the gas price and the gas limit and the network ID those were just properties that we set in the package.json the mnemonic is going to be an environment variable because you shouldn't share your mnemonic with anyone the mnemonic should always be kept secret because it's how you can access your account with all your funds so here we have our network ID our gas limit our gas price these are just values these can be public in a JSON file like this but the mnemonic this should be an environment variable and I'll show you how we can get the mnemonic up next all right so this is actually optional you don't have to pass in a mnemonic if you don't pass in a mnemonic you can just remove this and Ganache will actually just generate one for you but to be consistent you may want to have one for your own a mnemonic will generate the private keys to be given the starting balances of ether so every ethereum blockchain must start with some starting amount of ether otherwise there's nothing to trade so the mnemonic that you put in here is the private key for the wallet address that will get the starting balance of ether in the blockchain now if you don't put one in as so then you can actually just generate one for you but then it will generate a new one with every run so it's less consistent so instead we can build our own mnemonic okay so how do we build a mnemonic a mnemonic is just a series of words typically 12 words first let's take a look at what if we didn't generate a mnemonic what if Ganache just generated that for us well then we can just save this JSON file and then we can run the Ganache CLI to randomly generate the mnemonic for us so inside of our terminal in our project we want to call npm run Ganache and here just wait a moment to get our results okay at the top here go back to where you called npm run Ganache you can see that your project is running Ganache then we're running that long form command that we wanted so here we can see we have our Ganache CLI network ID then we want to configure Ganache and you can also check here make sure that everything is spelled correctly as well I can see I spelled Ganache wrong so I just have to fix that you want to make sure everything is spelled correctly because these are the properties that actually set the configuration for your blockchain okay so then you can just go back and hit control C and just run the project command again okay so then let's go from the top we have our project name then Ganache and then we have the long form version of the command so this is just what we put in then we have the Ganache CLI version and we have available accounts so what we're doing is we're running a local blockchain and we have these 10 accounts with 100 ethereum each don't get excited though this is just test ethereum it's not a real ethereum it's just for use on testing but you can't use it on a real blockchain to trade any kind of value these are just for testing and test nets then you have private keys one per each account then you have your wallet with a mnemonic that was randomly generated so here you can see we have a series of 12 words these were generated by Ganache and this is the mnemonic for the account that is going to get the balances of 
the initial balances of the blockchain. All right, so we have that account and then we have the 10 addresses for this account. Then we have the base HD path. We have our gas price and our gas limit, which we set in our configuration and our call gas limit, then we're listening on a port. We can kill this at any time with control C and we can rerun again with the up arrow key. You'll see this time we actually have a new mnemonic. So every time we run Ganache, we get a new mnemonic because we didn't set one ourselves. So how do we actually set a mnemonic ourselves? Well, we can build an environment variable to set the mnemonic. So I'm just going to copy this mnemonic and kill my Ganache for now, kill my blockchain. And to build an environment variable that you won't use often, that you'll just use shortly, you can just build the environment variable in the terminal right here where we are and export it right here in the terminal. This is for a limited use mnemonic. If you want one that's more permanent, you actually have to put it into your system environment variables. But if you want one that is temporary, then you can just use export mnemonic and then pass in the value of your mnemonic, like what we have here. And let's see, here we go. Just make sure that you don't have any strange characters in there. You want to make sure that you only have those 12 words. Otherwise, it's going to get confusing. So I'm going to here remove any of those extraneous characters and just have my 12 words. Then you hit enter and your mnemonic has been exported. So back in your code editor, you can put back in your mnemonic code here. So I'm just going to go to edit and then redo or actually edit undo. There you go. Edit undo and do that a couple times because I need to bring back that mnemonic. So I'm just going to fix my spelling mistake and put that mnemonic back in there. So now it's back in there. So this time we're actually using the environment variable. So if I go back to the terminal and I run npm run ganache again, this time my mnemonic is going to be consistent. So every time I kill the blockchain and rerun it, the mnemonic will be consistent. Whereas if I didn't specify a mnemonic, then Ganache would actually generate a new one each time. So it's up to you if you want to just have a random one each time or if you want a more permanent one for consistency. If you are going to be using the mnemonic over and over again to identify your account, then you should have a consistent one. All right, so we've been able to run our local blockchain. And currently it's running, it's running on this port. So this is our local blockchain, our small version of the Ethereum virtual machine. We could test this Ganache client out by sending an API call from another terminal. So for example, let's open up a new tab and we can use curl to send an API call. You have to have it in another tab because you have to have the Ganache blockchain running if you want to interact with it. So as soon as I kill the blockchain, I can no longer interact with it. I have to have it running if I want to interact with it. So in another terminal, you can use curl to send some kind of request. You want to make sure that you are setting it to this exact location of where your blockchain is running. And just don't forget the two forward slashes after HTTP. Okay, so then you want to send it there and then you can pass in the type of HTTP request, like a post request, add in headers like content type, application JSON, and pass in some data as well, like JSON RPC, and then 2.0, just make sure you don't forget your quotation marks around all of your values. And you can send some kind of method like web3 client version and then close off that command. Okay, send the command and you'll see the data here. Then in your other terminal, you'll see web3 client version will appear. So that means we've been able to send that method. Our client responded with the client version. Now these API calls like web3 client version are part of Ethereum's protocols and there are other methods as well that you can use. This is just one example. Here we used curl to send 
some post HTTP request to the blockchain. We sent the data type JSON and then we sent some JSON data, which just means you have a JavaScript object with keys and values separated by commas. So these are just the properties of the object. Then we got a response from the blockchain that showed us that API call Web3 client version. So this tells us that I was able to successfully interact with my blockchain because I was able to successfully send it a post request and then get a response back from the blockchain. So that is a good sign that tells us that the blockchain is working properly. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.